Good afternoon. So thank you for the kind words uh, and a warm welcome to my fellow learners. My name is Clint and being still, I commit to moving others. The biggest need for us as human beings is to belong. And when we find self-sustaining systems and belong to them, we thrive, we grow. Look at a tree, for example. A tree embraces the earth, it gets, it gives fruit, it gives shade, it gives homes to so many creatures. Even in its death, it gives wood. And so it's a circular system that has stood the test of time. It gets, gives, and grows. Absolutely. And so it is with our family trees. Right? We receive life from the very first community that we belong to, which is our families. All other communities in your life that you're going to be part of, help you sustain that life. But nothing can take away from the fact that you've received life from family. And while I use family and community interchangeably, my core focus that you will anchor on for the rest of your lives is family. And in that family, you have everything that you need because it gave you the life force. So what is it that you really need? So at a party that was thrown by a billionaire, Kurt Vonnegut turned out to his pal, Joseph Heller, who was the author of Catch-22. And he said to Joseph that the host of the party, who was a hedge fund manager, had made more money in one day than Joseph Heller had made from the sales of the book throughout its history. And Joseph Heller turned around and said, but I have something that this man perhaps will never have. Enough. And so what do we need enough of? Wealth? Do we? Of course. Right? And by, by wealth, I don't only mean money. I also mean relationships. I also mean time. We need enough of health so that we can enjoy our lives and the rest of our resources. And we need enough of peace that comes from having the courage to be ourselves. Look at Instagram today. You have tons of influencers who are teaching you how to get to your fire number, who are teaching you how to live longer and more fulfilling lives and get peace out of yoga or tons of other modalities, right? And so our families is the first place that we get this idea of what enough is for each of us. However, to be able to receive that from our families, we need to belong. And to belong, we have a price to pay. And that price is loyalty. So let me tell you how I paid that price to be part of my tribe, my family. This takes me back 30 years ago. And I was in school, horribly unathletic. And somehow, by some stroke of luck, I found myself getting past the heats and making it to the finals of the 100 meter sprint at my school. Eight boys, and when you looked at the lineup, you knew it wasn't going to be a good story for me. But that didn't stop me from practicing and putting in the work. And on the day of that race, I remember a dull pain in my stomach. I didn't want to show up, but I did, reluctantly. And the inevitable happened. I came in last. And even when I did, I told myself, hey Clint, that's not that bad. At least you're the eighth fastest amongst a division of 200 boys. Not bad, huh? I made the long walk back to where the parents were. My father came to watch me on that day. 
And I remember my stomach, how it felt. I remember my jaw clenching. And I remember my breath had paused when I heard my father say to me, when you go back home, tell them that you came in fourth place. And the shame that I felt that day of wanting to belong to my tribe made me make a promise to myself. I was going to be the most competent person that I could ever become so that I could belong to my tribe. And all of us sitting here in this room at some point of time in order to belong, pay the price with our loyalty and with our love. And all of us don't do that just for ourselves. We compensate for others as well. An interesting analogy, my wife recently went to a physio for a chronic neck and back pain. And while she did the work with the physio, the physio told her that the neck and shoulder is actually compensating for the root cause which is actually in her lower body. And she was amazed. She came and told me that very often we look at our bodies as individual parts, but we're all connected. And so it is with our families. We're all connected. And if you look at it, the story of a grandpa who passed away at a relatively young age in a sudden road accident. And grandma and her kids are left with an emotional and financial void. And what happens is they don't grieve enough because they get busy being strong. They get busy with life. And what happens is grandma passes that to her kids who spend the rest of their life unknowingly anxious. And then it passes on to the grandkids who are very risk averse. Or some of the grandkids who never even met their grandfather spend the rest of their lives with this urge to succeed, with this urge to provide financially and emotionally for their families. What they don't know is they're being loyal to their grandpa. And they're trying to compensate for the financial and emotional void left by his early death. And when I realized this, and this is a picture of my father recently taken, he's 88 years old, he's homebound, he lives two minutes away from me. And when I realized this, I was able to not blame my father anymore. I realized what he passed on is what he received. And I was able to have a conversation, which was one of the most beautiful conversations I've had in my life with my dad, to understand his dreams, to understand what he got, what he gave, how he grew. And with that, I was inspired to be able to take this to so many people in the world. And at that moment when that realization came in, I grew almost overnight, right? And so here we are. This is a picture of this institute. And how many of you, show of hands, realize that you're sitting here today because of what you have received, what you have got from your families? Wonderful. That's a, that's a majority of you. But the question is, as you go out, you're on the threshold of being the future, right? Leading this country into the future. And what's really, really important is for you to answer this question. No matter what I've got, what am I going to give back to the world? How am I going to grow? And so, many of us have received from our families Things that are not in our control. Are we short? Are we tall? What's the color of our skin? Right? But we also receive certain invisible inheritances. And over the next few minutes, I'm going to talk to you about those inheritances that you have the power to change. The first inheritance is our motivation. Our motivation is about knowing and pursuing what's really important to us and declaring it. <coughs> Let there be light and there was light. We need to declare it because the spoken word is powerful. Right? And let's look at the case of Joan, the engineer. 
Now, Joan was the first born child in a family of engineers. And what's the declaration of an engineer? We solve problems at scale, right? And Joan worked really hard, and she got into one of the best engineering courses around. And halfway through her engineering course, one of her dreams came knocking on her door. I would like to help people travel and learn. Joan's dream was to start a travel company that helped people learn as they travel. But what Joan does instead is she continues because, remember, she has to be loyal to her tribe to belong to it. And so how many of us as we go on in our professional courses, really are doing something to be able to be loyal. And what Joan really needs to do here is to have the courage to be able to be loyal to her dream. And what's different really between engineering and travel? But don't get me wrong, the engineering course can actually help her open an even more efficient travel company when she does, right? And so when you declare something, the universe conspires to get it to you. It could be the engineering course, it could be something else. It comes to you. So don't underestimate what Joan can do and how the engineering can fuel her dreams of that travel company. I've helped tons of kids, professional entrepreneurs, uh, folks in the social space to be able to make their declaration. My declaration is being still moving others. And what happens when you do a declaration? It helps you know what to ex accept in your life and what to reject. And therefore it makes you a very focused person. Right? But what Joan really needs after knowing what her motivation is, is the second inheritance. Which is what we get from one of our first communities, our family. Which is our beliefs. What are beliefs? Beliefs are nothing but thoughts on steroids. It's about being skilled at knowing our stories and our narratives and making sure that those stories are in line with our declaration. Remember what I said when I lost the race, when I came in last? I said, hey, I'm the eighth fastest child. Right? So it's how we narrate our stories to ourselves, our beliefs. And so, there are tons of beliefs that we inherit from our families. But what I've tried to do is put down three that have impacted me in my life. Look at Joan. Probably she's saying, oh, if I start this travel company, perhaps I won't be good enough for this family of illustrious engineers. And if she does not have the courage to really accept this, what she will do in her life is compensate by being highly competent. She will perhaps, I don't want to typecast the Jones of this world, but perhaps spend a lot of her life trying to control people. And then the foremost emotion she'll experience is anger. And likewise for people who say, I'm not deserving, right? They try to be more significant. You want that promotion, you want to stand first, you want that visibility. And while there's nothing wrong with that, over-indexing on it might not give you the balance and the fulfillment that you need in your life. And someone like this would perhaps li be living a life of fear. And likewise, I'm okay like this. Being okay with mediocrity. Someone who spends the rest of their life being likable, they cannot say no to others. And I can see a lot of you resonating with this, right? I can't say no to that project. I can't say no to this person. Um, sometimes we close ourselves out to human connection. And one of the feelings that really uh, rule us is our sadness. And so look at Joan. Uh, do you want to be someone like that who at the age of 50 has spent 30 years after her engineering um, not having the courage to meet her dream. 
And at the end of the day, what does a travel company do? They do solve problems, right? So if you look at it, uh, the core of the engineer and the core of someone who is helping people learn through travel is the same. You're helping people solve problems and learn as they travel. And so what would you advise John? You'd say, hey, John, you can do both. You can be an engineer and use that to start your dream and, and, and start your travel company. But for that, Joan has to first deal with her anger. And when you deal with it, it dissipates. And that brings me to our third and final inheritance, our emotions. Our emotions are nothing but the universe's way of telling us to attend to something that we're not looking at. So if Joan is angry, face that anger. When you feel that anger in your belly, you heal from it. And so coming to you, if you're angry at a fellow student for not showing up for that project, and if you feel like you're the only one burning the midnight oil doing that project, all you can say is, hey, doing this on my own is making me feel quite angry. It would be wonderful. And it would help the project so much if you participated. That doesn't mean that you're attacking your fellow student. It just means that you're acknowledging what you're feeling. Something that grandma didn't do. Something that Joan has the opportunity to do. Right? And having acknowledged that emotion with my dad made me realize that with my six and a half year old today, that's not what something I want to give forward. I want her to know that she can be Regardless of the shame, she doesn't have to be competent. She doesn't have to do anything to be part of this tribe. And so, if we look at... Can I have the next slide? If we look at the outcomes, it's wealth, health, and peace. And if you look at the input, the inheritances that we get from the first community that we are part of. It's our motivation, our beliefs, and our emotions. And you can pause, and you can grow regardless of what you got. You can grow, and as you get into the world, as students from Atlas and even beyond Atlas that are in this community today, you have something to give regardless of what you've got. And so, that tree can be watered with our attention and focus. So as I end, I'm asking you, what do you want to give your attention to? Very often, older people like us complain about younger people like you saying that there's so much of stimulation and where do you give your attention? Just because you're giving your attention to something that I don't... Uh, perhaps price, it doesn't mean you're not paying attention. And so the question is, are you attending to what gives you life? Are you attending, are you giving your attention to your declaration? And so, as I end, I want all of you to do a quick exercise with me. I learned this from Dr. Joe Dispenza and it's helped me tremendously in my life. So I want you to think of a problem that you have right now in your life. When you've thought of it, put your hands up quickly and think of the problem having got resolved. Okay? So for instance, you do, you've done really well in a subject that challenges you or you've repaired a relationship that has not been too good over the last three or four years. Think of the outcome. Are we done? Second step, think of a positive emotional attractor. How will you feel when that problem is resolved? Perhaps joy, perhaps excitement, and let that feeling show on your face right now. Can I see it? Right? Imagine. And then, today, take one action. One action. As if that problem is already solved. Whatever it is. Okay? Because electricity and magneticism are at the very first principles of life. Thoughts are our electricity, which is our beliefs. And our emotions are what we attract back. And the simplest way of get, give and grow 
that we do every day of our lives is our breathing. And so, when we breathe in, we receive. When we breathe out, we give. And the pause between the inhale and the exhale is really where we have the opportunity to grow, the choice to grow. And so when you look back at the first communities, your families, look at the grandpas, the grandmas, the mamas and dadas of this world that have shaped you. And look at the opportunity that you've had to get. And as you go out into this world, be very, very careful of what you're putting out there. Because everybody in this room is your community. So get, give and grow. Thank you very much.